Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Rosen Rubini podcast. My name is Manas Chavla, and I'm really pleased, as always, to be joined by CEO and head of research, Brunella Rosso. This year, we're looking one year ahead to the U.S. presidential elections, as given the current polling, Biden trails behind Trump. Uh, Brunella, we're in a pretty fractious geopolitical environment, but perhaps even a more polarizing domestic one in the United States. Uh, can you give us a recap of the events of the last few months uh, and how those might affect sort of the, the electoral race in the United States? Sure. So uh, next year is going to be a very busy one from an electoral perspective. We have published two pieces on that. Uh, there will be elections in both major developed market and emerging markets. In developed markets, you've got the US, the UK, and the EU. And in the emerging markets, we got uh, Russia, uh, India, and Taiwan, which will open the entire electoral season on January 13th. And this year will finish, most likely, with the US presidential election, depending on when the UK election will take place between November and uh, December. So clearly a big electoral year, depending on how things go, uh, the situation might dramatically change uh, at the global level because um, these are very, very important players. Let's focus on the US, which is the object uh, um, of this week um, on a column and podcast. So um, there have been a few polls, and those polls have shown some results. First of all, Trump is ahead in the primary election for the Grand Old Party, the Republicans. No big news, 40 points advantage compared to Ron DeSantis, which is the closest competitor. Second point, in spite of all this, um, Trump is still disliked by the majority of Americans, around 55 um to 40% in this favor. But these are not very different uh, results than that facing, than those facing um, uh, Biden, which also find itself with the 55 versus 40% disapproval rate. Um, hence, all um, polls have shown so far that the race, if you, if you were to be a rematch between Biden and Trump, would be uh, a neck and neck uh, race. And moving to uh, the Congress polls, uh, the Senate might be returning to Republicans by a very small margin. They may get 50 votes potentially, or 51 at most in terms of seats. Uh, the House is already in the hands of the Republicans and will remain so. Uh, what was interesting is the new polls that have emerged in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the really interesting things about the U.S. system is because it turns into effectively a two-party system, the presence of independent candidates that are not Republican or Democrat can obviously quite easily split the vote. Um, who is that a complicating factor for? Is it, is, it, is it worse for Biden? Is it worse for Trump? Is it even a possibility that's worth worrying about? So um, the poll showed that Trump is now ahead five of six key swing states and um, in the state in which Biden is ahead, Wisconsin is only a 2% margin. Another poll show that uh, Trump leads in terms of being more trustworthy for the management of the economy. And so when uh, new candidates emerge, when the margins are so slim, uh, Lots of changes may occur. It happened already <clears throat> in the past. Well, the biggest case was, of course, Prospero that ran in 1992 and prevented the re-election of George Bush, the father, versus Clinton. Then we had the case, much bigger if you want, in terms of consequences, when Ralph Nader ran in 2000 and prevent an Al Gore from becoming president. And we remember how all this um, meant, this uh, counting of, manual counting of ballots in Florida, and that was protracted for weeks and weeks and so on. So this, um, with such small uh, margins, these 
new candidates emerging, let's say, center or independently uh, can really cause trouble, especially to Biden, we believe, because they are emerging mostly from the crowd. For example, John, um, uh, sorry, Robert Kennedy Jr., which is um, a, um, a nephew of former President Joel Fitzgerald Kennedy, has been running for months now. And although he has zero chances of being elected, the fact that a name like his is on the ballot may cause trouble. Much more substantially, Jill Stein um, already last time prevented um, Hillary Clinton from winning because the votes that he got were more than the margin that eventually existed between the votes of Trump and Hillary Clinton in the key states. And the last but not least is uh, Senator Manchin, who's not going to run again, but maybe in fact launch an independent race to the White House under the signs of the so-called No Labels, which is a kind of an organization, centrist, centrist organization led by former uh, Senator uh, Joe Lieberman, who in fact was the running mate of Al Gore in the unfortunate 2020 presidential campaign. So all in all, we believe that this independent candidate can more can do more damage to Biden than Trump. That's a really interesting sort of historical analysis. Um, you know, just this week in, in the UK, as we always do, we celebrated the 5th of November, Guy Fawkes Day. Uh, I got to see some very nice fireworks in Oxford. I hope you did as well. Uh, but, you know, coming towards, as we are almost exactly a year out from the election, perhaps the 5th of November in 2024 could also be uh, a turning point in sort of the American political system. Because if Trump is reelected, I mean, it'll be a, a magnitude of change like no other, perhaps, that we've seen before. Uh, but as always, Brunello, thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you. Until next time.